Muy buenos días. Mi nombre es Arely Carreón, eh, miembro de la coordinación. Good morning. I'm Marily Carreón. I'm member of the coordination of Save Mobility, and for me it is an honor to be the moderator of this presentation of the campaign How Safe is Your Car in Mexico. Today, we will have in this presentation Estefan Brotem de los Reyes, who is who studied literature in Yunnan University. He is an activist, and in 2014, he began with the air quality campaign of El Poder del Consumidor. He has been part of this effort to regulate pollution and the performance of light vehicles. He's also in charge of this car safety campaign of El Poder del Consumidor, and he's part of the Observatory of Air Quality, as well as his chair of the program of the Latin NCAP. He's Stefan Brodsky. We also have Mr. Alejandro Furres, who's the Gen Secretary General for the new car program for Latin NCAP, and the Global Secretary for Latin NCAP. He's also part of Global NCAP through WNP29 as of 2011. In 20, 2008, he was part of the direction of EDUCAR, who's a joint program. He's also part of the Latin NCAP as of 2018, and he has been responsible for the testing of cars as well as the publishing of results. Alejandro Furas gained his title of engineering in the University of Uruguay in 2011. Also, we have Maria Jose Sendra Mora, who is the Director of Communication for Mobility Safety. He's, she's a sociologist with data recopilation specialization. He, she has collaborated for over a decade with NGOs as a researcher and an external consultant of different projects of human rights mobility on the domestic and international level on the regional scale. She's also part of the part of the reaction team with the responsibility. Welcome to all of you to begin with this presentation of the campaign How Safe Is Your Car? I would like to introduce you first to, to Stefan. Hi. Go on, Stefan. Hi. It is an honor to have Arely Carrion with, par, with the moderation. She has done a great work. And it is a good start for this start or restart of how safe your car is your car. We start by introducing this new edition of the campaign demanding for safer cars. Why? Because in Mexico, we still have really low safety cars that are being marketed for decades, and they are jeopardizing families, not only those who travel inside of the vehicles, because, as you may know, this is a public act because cars use streets, which are public spaces where not only drivers use it, but also vulnerable people such as cyclists, public transport users, and pedestrians. Maria Jose will talk much in depth about this, but these vehicles have jeopardized and risked for decades our population. Practically the full population moves through the streets of the country, and thus it implies a risk to the population. What we have done through our analysis with the database of the National Registry of the car industry with the INEGI, which is the 
the statistic of organization of the government, along with Latin NCAP, which is the testing and evaluation program that has funds of the UN. And for this Latin America and the Caribbean section is Latin NCAP. Based on the tests done by Latin NCAP during the last decade, we have been able to determine a conservative figure of the amount of low safety cars that have been marketed in our country. And that is an important part of backing up the campaign that we are launching today about how safe is your car, especially making an illusion of the crash tests with the dummies, where the dummies as you can see in screen, this is the image that will be the flagship for our campaign, saying they're the only ones who can withstand a car crash. Your family does not. Dummies are the only who can go one crash after another to see the compression readings of these dummies within the inside of cars that are tested and that reflect the possible damage you're, you can receive as a, as a driver. We all have specific resistance specters, regardless of our nationality, regardless of your background, it doesn't matter. We all have a human limit to tolerating impacts. And if you go outside those limits, our integrity is at risk and our safety is at risk. And through these crash tests, we can see that there are injuries that can cause permanent damage or death or significant impact to the livelihood of people. So this is a call for the car manufacturers to do their due diligence and to comply with this mandate to safeguard the population through the products that they sell, that is the cars they sell. They need to think about safety for everyone, not only for those who are on board of a car, also the vulnerable users of the streets. We have the technology in place to take them into account. Take, take into account everyone who is outside the car and to safeguard their lives. Regarding this million and a half of vehicles that are low safety that were sold in our country, between 2015 and 2020, I will tell you how we came to that figure. First of all, I will share my screen. What we do is take the database of the car manufacturing data of the INEGI, which is the public statistics body, and taking into account the array of shock tests or crash tests in our region, most of those cars are, who are tested are marketed in Mexico, 
and through a top 30 in sales from 2015 to 2020, we saw the analysis of the models that were the top sales and the evolutions that had zero or one stars were sold. What? Why do we talk about the zero or one stars? Review. Well, in the Latin and CAP compression data on the crash tests, we can see red flags in one of the users of the car, be the driver, the shotgun, or the back users, mainly children, properly seated. So if you have a red point in the classification in Latin and cap regarding the compression of the dummy, this shows that there is a life-threatening injury for the users of the car. So through these readings and this evaluation of zero or one stars, we were able to determine the figure of the cars that were sold with this rating in the top 30 sales between 2015 and 2020. Here we have Nissan Versa with almost half a million units sold during that period. Nissan March with 208,849 units. Nissan Suru with 121,665 units. The GM Beat slash Spark because they share the same frame. We can see them around the figure of 343,000. General Motors Aveo, 304,000 units, and GM Matisse, which was still sold in 2015, and it's sold by 23,000. The initial versions of Ford Figo amount to 56,000 units, and Volkswagen Gold with 38,000 units sold between 2015 and 2020. Let us remember that the cars are not consistently rated as zero or one stars. Some of them were deploying improvements. Thanks to Latin NCAP, we saw an increase in the value of the ratings for newer models. And it improves a little bit their rating. So on the next slide, you can see the behavior regarding the terms of zero and one rated cars, we can see that in 2015, 321,092 units were sold having zero or one stars ratings. That is 23.7% of the total sales. 2016, we have 369,000, which amounted to 22%, almost 23%. In 2017, it was 17% of cars rated zero and one stars. In 2018, 22% of the cars sold had that characteristic and on 2019 15.7% and 12.3% were sold for 2019 and 2020. This doesn't mean that they are the only vehicles with zero or one star ratings in Mexico. This only amounts to the conservative figures 
taking into account that we are only talking about a subset of the top 30 of sales. There are other vehicles that are outside the top 30 of sales that could also be ranked as zero or one stars, which is a deficient safety for vehicle users and street users. Remember that the Latin and Cap program is a nonprofit which runs with a limited budget to evaluate the full market offer for our whole region in Latin America. So in that regard, the program has to be really strategic in choosing the most representative cars that span through the greatest amount of consumers in our region in order to do that evaluation. And in the other part of our campaign, we talk about the benefits that could be awarded to our population in Mexico as street users. That is pretty much everyone because pretty much everyone moves through the streets, call it a car or public transport, bicycle, by feet, motorcycle, wheelchair. All of those who use the streets, there is research regarding the document of the public regional good, which is done by the Inter-American Development Bank, where the analysis of several specialists came to the conclusion that using proper safety technology for Europe and with a proper education for consumers. And by that, we mean that includes evaluations done by NCAP, such as the WHO and the UN suggests and recommend an international stage to comply with a proper protection for consumers with those two components of re proper regulations plus a proper information system for consumers up to 5,600 lives could be saved in our country alone regarding the conclusions of the Inter-American Development Bank in their study regarding our safety in Latin America and the Caribbean by implementing the UN and consumer systems. So that is the end of my my introduction with these systems and the information system, along with the legal framework, we can save lives in our country. There is evidence galore, and not only for cold data, but also for other countries who actually implemented changes and where conclusions were made to show for progress in street safety to safeguard street users. Those are amazing data. Over a million vehicles are circulating in our country among the top cells lack security whatsoever or have very pure security. And that is a risk not only for those who bought the vehicles, but for every single one of us 
we always using the streets. And before I want to give the floor to our next member of the panel, let me remember you that we have the translation for you. So if you wish to listen to the English channel, you can do so by selecting the language. And also to remember the press members that you can start writing any questions we may have in the Q&A button for us to deal with them at the end of the presentation. Thank you very much, Stephen Brozdiak. And now we will have Engineer Alejandro Furas, who is the Secretary of Latin and Cap, regarding the importance of this program for measuring and evaluating the vehicles. What does a zero rating car mean? Zero star rating car mean, sorry. For us to understand the importance of these evaluation processes. Thank you, Arely. It's an honor to be with you and to share this panel with such colleagues. The information we have seen from Stefan is impressive and it's a cause of concern. You, when you see a zero rating scar, is that they don't have any stars. If you have no stars, you mean there is no qualification. But if you have zero stars, that is a really bad news because it's a high probability that users of the cars or street users have life-threatening risks. That is the importance of it. And the scenarios we test are not crazy tests. They are oftentimes below the reality we can see in Mexico City and in the rest of the country. What we are trying to simulate in the laboratory is really conservative to what we have in reality. A car from zero or one stars have a great impact in Mexico. I want to talk about two things. The Panorama is, is grim, it is a cause of concern. But I, first of all, I would like to tell you how do we fix this and how do we came to this point? Well, we, some say, well, the governments should create a normativity. The others say, well, there is a UN document released in 2011 for car safety, where five critical pillars must be worked on. And one of those are car safety. All five pillars must go in evolution. If we go to safe cars where we are involved, we have seven activities. First of all, is adopting a solid normativity system on the domestic level. Secondly, we need an evaluation system for consumers, such as the Latin MCAP rating system with SARS. And there are other activities that are not as important as these two. What I'm saying is that normativities and information to the consumers must coexist in the market. Successful deployments have shown they deploy this coexistence of sharing the market with, and providing the market with information and having strong normativities. There is no substitution. Normativity alone won't do much, and information alone won't do much as either. That is the solution countries have deployed with success. That's the only way to go with information and normativities. The other thing I would like to address is that these countries who have this shared system of normativities and information, which is a proven tactic, is the safe system vision. This comes from the hypothesis that in the case of our day-to-day -day traffic, we need to build roads and cars that are safe for increasingly distracted cars. We need to to think of the driver as someone who is increasingly more distracted, and our roads must be 
prepared for those destruction. And it is not only that we are human beings, but we have more interaction with more cars because we have increasing numbers of street users. So we move faster. So it is pretty much obvious that we have more interactions, meaning car crashes. That's why we need roads and cars that are safe for these increasingly distracted drivers. And in, if, if we have in a market a robust normativity and information system in coexistence in the market, we won't have much, we will have progress. But in Mexico, we have not had any progress. The normativity is the responsibility of the governments. But the NCAP programs worldwide, with the exception of Latin NCAP, we have nine programs. And with the exception of Latin NCAP, everyone has government support, except for Latin America. The governments support them, promote them, or are part of the programs to, to leave as they must and to do their due diligence. In Latin America, we don't have that. And that is a cause of concern. The message is, where do we need to go? There is no magic solution. Other solutions may turn into failures and human loss of life. What we need to do is simple. We need to keep on with these frameworks, which are not ours. They are publishing the UN document. So we can provide you with full support we congratulate you for this campaign with this market analysis. We hope it has an impact on the market and you have an ally in us to improve the safety in Mexico. Thank you. Thank you, Alejandro Furas, for this evidence of what works, what we need to do as a country to have an impactful transformation and to achieve a good 194 normativity and an access platform to consumers. We know that's what works. We don't need to reinvent warm water. water. And to talk about the second component, which is the access to information and the emissions we have in our country and the relevance of the pedestrian safety program, we have Maria Jose Sendra. Good morning, Majo. Thank you, Areli. Good morning. In name of my NGO, I want to restate my the commitment of the NGO for street users, pedestrians, public vehicle, public transit users, car users, and those who use the street who are the most vulnerable on the roads and streets of, of Mexico. We are thrilled to be part of this effort with Latin NCAP and El Poder del Consumidor to improve car safety in the country. And thank you very much to taking us in account for this launch of the campaign of How Safe Is Your Car. After this exposition of our colleagues, the proper information of, call of consumers on the equipment and the safety performance of the models in Mexico who are being marketed in the country, as well as the end Latin NCAP test, we have uh, an essential component of to safeguard the street users. Mexico currently does not have a proper system for consumer information that is provided organically by the industry. We have work by NGOs to increase visibility on this topic for models who go in the streets of Mexico. However, the industry has not organically and visibly provided with an information system that, pro that informs consumers to, to make decisions on the use of cars and purchase 
options to buy them. To understand the urgency and importance of what we are talking today, we need to remember, and these figures have been repeated time and time again, for members and specialists who are part of this safe, safety mobility. We are talking about 1,600 deaths and 164,000 permanent injury to people. We have 44 people dying every day on the street. And out of those injuries, some of them have permanent discapacities. And that is the cause of not preventing and employ, deploying better safety in our streets. The effort of improving the street safety to have safer cars and to have precise information of the purchase decision and the use of cars with technology, first of all, and secondly, good safety performance could save millions of lives. The Inter-American Development Bank has estimated that 5,000 lives could be saved every year. That is if we improve car safety in the country. Now, in this campaign, How Safe Is Your Car? We want to stress that having safer cars in Mexico is not only the problem of car owners or those who want to buy a car. It is important for all street users. That is, who are at risk are not only the users of the cars. They are pedestrians, cyclists, drivers, public transport users, and workers. It is a full population whose life depends on elements such as car safety. Currently, we have the technology, and it is even the standard in most countries, and it improves on pedestrian safety specifically. That's why we want to talk about the pedestrian protection standard. This is a life safety measurement. It is a problem that can be solved with the front part of the cars in the defense and the connecting part of the roofs. This establishes the necessary specifications to have these structures that come into contact with, with pedestrians can reduce the impact in the human body. That should be a commonplace standard to design cars in Mexico, given the huge amount of pedestrians who end up with life-threatening injuries, permanent damage, or death. Currently, we don't have information by car manufacturing during these standards and specifications. The information is not accessible. It is not clear. It is not something that can that is organically provided to car buyers. So if we think about how to solve, how to resolve this deadly situation for new cars, we could, only we could save up to one thousands of lives in, in Mexico per year. That to end things up, I would tell you that the demand and the declaration of Mexico needs safe cars now. It is a pleasure for me to have to be part of this panel. It is a pleasure to have you, Ariel Alejandra. Andrew, Stefan, I would also like to tell you that currently we have a public inquiry of the normativity that talks about new cars. It is currently in a public consultation stage, and we are in the window of opportunity to send a comment for the consultative 
body of the Ministry of Economy to have Mexico demanding safer cars to ensure the right to mobility, which is a constitutional right. Thank you very much. And that is it by my part. Thank you, Majo. It is really important information for Mexican consumers and to take use of this 194 normativity where the normativity for new cars is at stake. We need to have a proper design of the normativity and we need no more investment. We only need to establish the mandatory character of these standards so that we can have safer cars being sold. And as Majo says, it is not only about those who buy new vehicles, it is about all of those who use streets on a daily basis. We need to have safe cars for everyone. And we have talked in other spaces on this campaign about how important safe cars are. Almost half of street deaths are pedestrians. It is incredible that the standard of pedestrian protection, which is the main victims, are not even taken into account. It is something that should be included and it is half of deaths in our country. So figures are dramatic. Thank you very much, Majo. And now we will go to the introductory video for this campaign, where we will discuss the importance of safe vehicles and responsibility of car industry in Mexico, and how important it is to have the government to establish this normativity right in our country. We will see the video and we will come back to provide you with more information on this campaign. And then we will go to our Q&A, which you can use with the Q&A button for our panel members to answer. Let's go to the video. In Mexico, from 2015 to 2020, over a million and a half cars were sold with one and zero star ratings. We would avoid over 5,000 deaths in Mexico per year. Only they resist crashes. Your family does not. Let us demand safer cars for our families in Mexico. Get yourself informed. How safe is your car, Dr. It is baffling, this video. Thank you very much to the, con to the coordinators. We will see it in social media. You have more people aware and to inform people about this 194 normativity, which is available until November the 29th. Now I will read some of the questions we have had. How expensive it is to have safe cars for the industry? I don't know who can answer this question. From Ramon Veras. Do you have this calculation? If I may. When we talk about safe cars, we talk about safer cars. Latin and CAP suggest as a standard for Latin America, we could tell you that cost is zero because manufacturers are selling safe cars in Mexico. And if manufacturers talk about complaints about costs, they are probably lacking behind in, in safety. We have cars in the market who comply with flying colors, the recommendations of letting in cap. They are 
small cars, they are, of course, not the most expensive, the most cost efficient for consumers, but they comply with pedestrian safety, stability controls, so it is relative to talk about costs. If we see costs, we need to take a look at the lack of updating for those cars. I have an idea of something. An airbag is $60 for the manufacturer. If they have ABS, the computer device is around $60 or less for the manufacturer. And this is, saves as much lives as the seat belt does. So it is pretty marginal to the cost of a human life. No life is worth $60 for an airbag or a stability control computer. <clears throat> the Mexican industry is one of the great manufacturers of the global market, and they comply with these international standards. And Cars that are sold in Mexico sometimes would not go in other markets, but they do manufacture cars. They have the install capacity, they have the training for their workers, and they are being exported to other markets. So why not for this national market? Thank you very much, Alejandro. We have several other questions for you. I will read some of them. When did you begin with the Latin NCAP evaluation? What has improved and worsened? Sorry. Are manufacturers open? What What are the changes you have seen? Okay. We began testing in 2010. All the results of the Latin NCAP are posted publicly. We have a website and an app that you can download in mobile devices and you can download it for free. We have alerts for you whenever we have new updates. Information is free, it is open, and we invite manufacturers on the date of the test. They do not choose the car to avoid tampering, but we share the information of the test in digital forms, that is the raw data, and we see a process where we analyze and we return or provide the manufacturer to a result. They are invited before, during, and after the test. They know in full detail what is going on. They also ask if it is possible to have a speed limit. I love that question. Before, something I want to answer something. Car manufacturers are open to changes. If we hadn't tested them and showed them, they would never have a reaction. They have reacted as a consequence of letting NCAP results. We cannot test something that cannot be shown. Everything that's tested is publicly available. Can you repeat the other question, please? Can we have a speed limit preset? It is a personal vision, that's personal. In Latin NCAP, we need to test cars at the top speed the car can go. What would happen is that the car sells cars that are that have a preset speed limit. Or we can have different speed limits. We believe we need to have different frame velocities to test. Is there any relationship between the brands 
estrellas y con, o con una who have, have poor results and the number of car crashes, can we have a correlation? Maybe we can link two things. First of all, you can have the accident of a model and the fatality of the car crashes. It is not either or. Fatality and deaths, you can see this in statistics. In Mexico, it is tough to have access to them. We don't know if there is any system of confidentiality or how does it work. But in other countries, as in Colombia, you can have quality data to work with those data. And you can have a good correlation where you see the cars with highest impact, where seldomly we have poor rated cars involved in the highest death or the deadliest accidents from zero to two stars. So there is a direct relationship. So maybe we don't have the data. Yes, that's what happens. And that depends on the market and the transparency of information. That is really important. It is hard to have these problems. Otherwise, we need to go to he said, she said. And there is no standard of the data, and we don't have the same clarity. And that is the problem of Latin America societies. Here's another question. Sorry, I want to tell you that regarding this question and what Alejandro is saying, the exercise we have done to try to find a correlation or a possible correlation between zero star rated cars and fatalities, the Mexican Institute for Competitiveness made a research in benefit of the car safety systems with information available. I mean, there are several gaps in information, as you say, Arely, and as Alejandro says, about the particularity of information handling in Latin America. However, despite all of these gaps, in transparency, in databases of insurance companies, because it's private information, we could determine that there is a statistically significant correlation between the zero star rated cars that are sold and the deaths in Mexico. It is not causality. We are far from that. Pero sí, sí hay una asociación estadística However, significativa. there is a statistically significant relationship. I just want to mention this. Everything seems to indicate that there is a tight relationship between the cars that are sold with poor quality ratings and fatalities. Thank you, Stephen. Now the producers will share with you the link of this study. Guadalupe Fuentes has a question. Saying, okay, Latin American governments have not provided support for Latin America. What has been the support of the consumer agency in Mexico. Thank you. I'm dressed as a white, but I'm not a doctor. I'm just an engineer. Thank you. However, when we talk about lack of support in regards of Mexican, we have seen in Mexico the Consumer Protection Agency. It has been disappointing for us because they are more interested in defending the industry than 
safeguarding the street users. I don't have the full detail, but we need to understand that they are part of a ministry that have that has interests and are ba biased, so to speak, in their decision-making capabilities. But they are more interested in protecting the industry side of things than the street users. And that is a shame. Thank you, Alejandro. Stefano Majo, do you have any other insight? We also see what are the most insecure cars in Mexico. We have some brands, but is it the order that you showcase them or which is the most unsafe of brands? Well, we don't talk about brands or insecure cars. We talk about more or less safety because a manufacturer can build a top-of-the-line safety car and a zero-star rated car. Regarding models, the worst performance historically was Nissan Sur in Mexico. In other countries, it was known as Centra. But this is one of the most popular cars in Mexico. There are several of them, even if they are no longer being produced. Some of them are used as caps. Also, Chevrolet Aveo is another of those models. Other models, and this is public data, we have Chevrolet Beat, March in a given moment. They have been updated. We need to test March again. And I want to tell you that Latin Inca is an NGO with a razor thin budget. We need a big budget to test all the vehicles. That's the only way we can have manufacturer changing voluntarily. If you see the reviews of March, they had zero stars. And currently, they have more airbags. And it is manufactured in Mexico, and it is one of the cheapest cars. And this is thanks to the pressure of the ENCAP program in the region. Models have improved as Nissan MPT 300, Ford Figo as well, regardless of its imported status, it has improved. Aveo has also been improved in safety. Also the new Onyx, which is now being manufactured in Mexico as an important car with good safety features. So there is a industry change. And what is going in the streets? Uh, however, the, the cars that were sold with zero stars are still on the on the streets and they will continue on the streets for a long time to come. Is it possible to increase safety in poor, poorly rated cars? No. Also from El Financiero, we have a question from Axel Sanchez. We are on time, always time is problem. The scarcity of semiconductors jeopardizes the security efforts. Okay, can we improve safety after the car is being done? No, it is impossible. With the maintenance on the vehicle, we can avoid the decayment. Regarding semiconductors, semiconductors will complicate the production of some vehicles, but it should be no problem for the safety elements such as airbags and electronic control of stability. They, they have no impact because semiconductors and the crisis should not have an impact. They will have an impact with emergency autonomous driving, probably, not 
in all cases, but it is not an excuse whatsoever to keep on improving in safety because this has nothing to do with semiconductors. If the company wants to lower the production, that is one thing, but taking safety of vehicles with the pretext of semiconductors, no. That is a, a hard no. This is the information of the campaign, how safe is your car? So we will stop with the conclusion. Thank you very much for your attention and for being with us. Once again, we invite you to go to ketanseguros2auto.com, which is in the chat, where we find the hard data and all the information and materials for this public consultancy. And keep a close eye on this information. Just as we have heard, information has not been publicly available as we wish it would have been, with the due importance, at least, because car safety is important for everyone who uses the street. We hope that this material and this campaign contributes to transforming our perception of safety, our public demand for safety and the responsibility of authorities and the manufacturers to try to address clearly this fifth pillar of safety in the streets. If our cars are safe, it doesn't matter how much information we have, how well the streets are built and how much we know about the transit rules and our behaviors. If our vehicles are deficient, if they are not safe enough, the errors that we can have as humans can be life-threatening or health-threatening for us. And it is not possible to have manufacturing, manufacturing processes disregarding the safety of the street users. So thank you very much to Stefan Bosnik, Alejandro Furas, Maria Jose Sendra from Perfección con Responsabilidad. Thank you very much to our assistants. And please keep a close eye to these materials that will be active during this consultation process for the 194 normativity until November 21st. Keep a close eye on the information to achieve our safety for all of us. I'm a member of the coordinator. I'm Arely Carreon. Thank you very much for your attention and have a good day.